When I became a Unitarian Universalist at the age of 24, my grandmother asked me why I did it. I told her that the UU Church offered me the explicit freedom to believe as I chose. In response, this woman who had attended the first Christian church every Sunday for most of her life said wisely, people do that anyway, dear. People may do it anyway, I thought, but I certainly wasn't encouraged by my prior church to think and act so freely. And so I was genuinely and positively overwhelmed by the freedom of belief in my new church. Like many others, I proclaimed, finally, I have found a place where I can believe whatever I want. The words are quintessential Unitarian Universalist newcomers claim and a great frustration for the religious professional. I can believe whatever I want is almost as helpful a description of our faith as Unitarian Universalism is the religion that believes in nothing. It is in the ensuing years I have thought more about my answer to my grandmother and have realized that my conversation was based on something deeper. I found a church demonstrating a true commitment to one of the principles, not only to affirm, but to actively promote a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. In my first Unitarian Universalist congregation, the people were critical about being dismissive without being dismissive and doubtful without being blasphemous. They were curious and dedicated and alive in a way I had not witnessed or experienced before. A year and a half after joining that congregation, I entered seminary for reasons I could not express in words, but which I knew in my heart I had to do it. I've been working on the why ever since. The fourth of our seven principles is a loaded one. It is tempting to focus on the freedom part or the search part without looking at the principle in its entirety. We mustn't wave the, way, the flag of our religious freedom and the free search without committing ourselves to be responsible in the endeavor, without responsibility, considering what makes true, true, and what makes meaning, meaningful. Without responsibility, a free search for truth and meaning is potentially narcissistic and destructive. It is our sense of responsibility that calls us to consider our relationships within the interdependent web of existence and the consequences of our beliefs, which, if worth anything, will lead to action. Too often, we relinquish the responsibility in our insistence on maintaining our so-called freedom. Most remarkably, somehow, we seem to have convinced ourselves that freedom implies an affirmation of rampant individualism. That whatever I have convinced myself is true in my mind and heart is justifiable and legitimate, regardless of my actions. It is evidenced in the rampant sectarianism too, as we deepen the chasms that separate us and them, rather than acknowledge that their perspective, though different, often has worth and validity. In our own spiritual quests, 
we dismiss certain religious perspectives as meaningless because they are too traditional or not traditional enough. And we grant no validity to certain political or social perspectives that vary from our own party lines. At the same time, our moral and religious responsibility calls us to live with the conviction, holding fast to abiding truths, even when truth and principle are unpopular, even as we welcome new insights. Recently, I conducted the memorial service for my uncle, who was not a Unitarian Universalist, but who embodied the fourth principle. His daughter wrote to me, Dad didn't do things because they were fashionable or because he cared about what people thought. He did them because they were right, fair, or honest. I sometimes thought of him as being too set in his ways and beliefs, living only in a black and white world. I used to think this was a fault. As I became older and my decisions in life were more complicated, I realized that dad did see the gray. He just didn't believe in spending much time there. It takes a strong person to live by their convictions. And my dad was one of them. In dad's world, two wrongs didn't make a right. The end did not justify the means. Mistakes happened and you were responsible for your choices. He knew he wasn't perfect and he didn't expect perfection in others. Dad didn't preach these things, he lived them and he let me watch. If we are to actively affirm and promote a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, we must be deliberate and diligent in our living. As persons of faith, we accept responsibility for our own actions. We are honest about our assumptions and biases and are at all times open to the truth and meaning that life holds out to us. In response, we are willing to act on that truth and meaning, to evolve in word and deed, and to live our convictions. In this effort, I am inspired by the admonition of St. Francis of Assisi, Preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. In Baltimore in 1819, in his sermon at the ordination of Reverend Jared Sparks, William Ellery Channing admonished the young ordinand. You will remember that good practice is the end of preaching and will labor to make your people holy livers rather than skillful disputants. In this 21st century, we are too often skillful disputants at the expense of holy living. And while the dispute is justified, we face great and frightening forces trying to shape America and the world into a homogenous monolith. We seem more interested in being right than in doing right by one another. But when we pause long enough to reflect on what it might mean to be a holy liver, to ask what is truly life-giving, meaningful, and worthy, we have to wonder how far those disputes carry us. What comfort does a strong self-righteous perspective bring in a time of fear and despair? When face to face with our own or our family's mortality, what kind of truth and meaning makes the prospect of death bearable? To live daily with the knowledge that we will all die one day, we need to know what makes the living worth the effort. That is the end which the free and responsible search should serve, to illuminate great truths that more effectively elucidate the human condition, to create meaning in the midst of life's confounding reality, to reveal insights 
that help us to shape the world into the heaven we yearn for. As responsible religious seekers, we recognize that we are privileged to be free, to have resources to pursue life beyond mere survival, to continually search for truth and meaning, to exist beyond bonds of dogma and oppression, and to wrestle freely with, and thereby, thereby understand more fully, truth and meaning as they evolve. This privilege calls us not to be isolated and self-centered, believing that our single progressive perspective trumps all others, but rather to be humble, to be open to the great mysteries of truth and meaning that life offers. And those mysteries may speak to us through our own intuition and experience, but also through tradition, community, conflict, nature, and relationships. As a faith tradition, Unitarian Universalism makes sacred the right and responsibility to engage in this free and responsible quest as an act of religious devotion. Institutionally, we have left open the questions of what truth and meaning are, acknowledging that mindful people will, in every age, discover new insights into the human condition and into the enduring dilemma of mortality. With privilege and freedom comes responsibility. It is our responsibility to use our reason in the tradition of our Unitarian forebears, to serve our faith. We do not rely solely on the truths revealed in a single sacred text, for we understand that such texts were and are composed by humans for a particular people in a particular time and place. But we also don't dismiss any text without considering its value. Likewise, we must not rely solely on our own perspective. A responsible use of reason requires that we consider more than one perspective before coming to a conclusion. It calls us to acknowledge the legitimacy of perspectives that differ from our own. It compels us to remain open to new truths, new understanding, new meaning. In a Christian Science Monitor article about her experiences in New Orleans in the wake of Hurricane Katrina in 2005, Reverend Gail Bowman writes, the rising voice of spirituality declares that God is here. We were floored by the storm's display of power, unable to get our minds wrapped around it. But we don't just see flooded houses filled with mold and mud. We see a requirement and an opportunity to think about what it means to be home and to have a home. Not just in the sense of people and community, but being united with other people all over the world who have lost what we have lost and worse. In one of spirituality's outward manifestations, the churches are already regathering. We will try to find some way to grow from this, to grow closer to God, to grow closer to one another. We will try to use this glimpse of extraordinarily unspeakable power, this liberation from comfort and the illusion of control as a wedge to keep the door of disruption open in us. We have the sneaking suspicion that something important, mysterious, and much needed is trying to come in. I say, let it come. Bowman's words express the calling of our liberally religious faith. Based on more than the scripture 
or tradition or church doctrine are traditional demands that we be engaged, that we accept life's invitation to think and reflect about what every experience, every insight, every challenge means. And our tradition also demands that we, in response, allow that meaning to shape not just our minds and spirits, but our actions in the world. Today, my answer to my grandmother about why I chose Unitarian Universalism is different than it was when I first joined this faith. I was initially drawn toward the freedom it offered. Now I am challenged and rewarded by its charge to be a responsible seeker of authentic truth. And so I am a Unitarian Universalist, a person of religious conviction who freely seeks truth wherever it may be found, through ancient and contemporary texts, through the words of great and humble prophets, through the earth's natural wisdom, and through my own intuition and rational insight, and who strives to responsibly enliven that truth in my every word and deed. May my life be a genuine embodiment of that faith. <laughs>